is up guys, welcome back to Predator Exotics. Today we're going to be giving you a full care guide on the wedge snouted skinks. The latter name for this species is Chalcide Sepsoides. We got these guys about two months ago from KBN Reptiles in Coventry. If you haven't checked that video out, it's a couple weeks ago, go check it out. It's a really good video and you'll see us picking up these guys. But for now, let's get into a full care guide for this species. So these guys originate from North Africa in the Middle East, specifically Libya, Egypt, Israel and Jordan where they can be found in the sandy soils and sand dunes of this area. They can attain a length of around 17 centimetres long and they're quite slender with small limbs attached because they don't need them as they swim through the sandy substrates where they live. And they have lots of stripes running all the way down the length of their body. This means they're camouflaged in the sandy soils where they live in the wild. Their lifespan is around five to eight years long, but in captivity this could be longer as they don't have the added pressures that they face in the wild. So let's talk about the tank. We keep them in a 60 long by 45 deep by 30 high tank. This is because they don't actually need any climbing space because they're a terrestrial and fossorial species, which means that they spend most of their time underground. So in terms of substrate, we use a mixture of Arcadia, earth, arid and sand. We mix it together to give them a nice like sandy soil uh, environment for them to swim through. In terms of most of the decoration that you see inside the tank, this is just purely for looks. They don't really use this, uh, except for maybe in the basking spot where sometimes they'll come out and uh, lay in amongst the rocks, which allows them to warm up. So in terms of the hides that we actually have inside this tank, they are only there in case they do want a little pocket above ground uh, to come up and feel safe, whereas most of their hides is the soil and sand that they swim in. And in terms of the rocks and the driftwood that we keep inside this tank, this makes sure that we give them a more natural, realistic look and uh, allows them to manoeuvre around their tank instead of just having just a tank full of sand. So not everything is actually known about this species' habits. It's believed during the summer they're actually nocturnal. This could be to escape the boiling hot heat of the day. And during the winter they're believed to be diurnal. This is possibly because it's not as hot during the winter and they can come out during the day and it's not during the scorching temperatures. So as usual, we use the Arcadia kit. This is the 12% UVB kit because they live in North Africa and the Middle East. This means that there's a high UVB output and we want to match that inside this enclosure. So we've got a 12% 22-inch UVB Arcadia kit on top. Uh, you do lose about 30% of that through the mesh, which means it's going to be around 8% UVB, but that is perfectly acceptable for this species. So because this species is from North Africa and the Middle East, they like it really, really hot. So the basking spot is actually 38 degrees, which is quite hot. We've got a temperature probe amongst the slate at the back. This maintains that steady basking spot temperature, allows them to come over here to bask if they need to. So at the moment, we're actually using a 75 watt Arcadia heat bulb. This ensures that temperature is nice and hot, but it means the cool area cools down to a nice temperature and they can thermoregulate nice and easily across the length of the tank. So as always, make sure you use a thermostat with any heating products. We've chosen the Habistat Digital Dimming Thermostat because we believe it's one of the best ones on the market. This controls the lighting and heating, which means from 9 o'clock till 9 o'clock the heat and the lights are on. And they get reduced at night and the lights go off, which means they have a nice 12 on 12 off hourly cycle. As always, when you're using your temperature stuff, don't always go by the thermostat. Make sure you have one of these temperature probe, one of these temperature guns. This means that you can point the laser inside the tank and it'll show you an accurate temperature, it means you're double checking your thermostat and making sure there's no mistakes within your enclosure. So this species has a bit of a unique uh, way with dealing with humidity inside the tank. So you need to keep these guys at about 50 to 60% humidity, uh, but it needs to be more of a unique and kind of harder way of, uh, of dealing with this. Basically, there's two ways of uh, dealing with this. It's either running a tube down to the bottom layer of the substrate and then pouring the water through the tube so it reaches the bottom and moistens up the bottom area. Or, as we found and how we do it, is uh, we kind of spray down one side of the tank uh, and then mix the soil in. The top will dry out, but the bottom will stay nice and moist. This allows them to have a wet side of the tank and then a dry side of the tank, depending on where they want to go to. Uh, it does require a bit more maintenance to keep it at this kind of uh, level, uh, so we just wanted to make you guys aware that it can have a bit more upkeep uh, with dealing with the humidity of this species. So people are still trying to work out the schedule of when you should do this. Us personally, we do a light spray down about uh, three times a week and then we mix in to get the sand and the soil wet. And then every couple of weeks we do a heavier spray down. This is because, yes, these guys come from a sandier dune area, but they do like to hang out in kind of the vegetation soil systems, uh, which of course will be a lot wetter than the sand dunes that they come from. And we just try and simulate that kind of uh, environment in the wild. 
So we offer a couple of different food items for this species. The first one is small crickets that are around four to five millimeters in length. This is great enrichment for the skinks and they can swim through the sand ambushing their crickets and their prey. Um, gives them a lot more activity and makes them work for their food which is always good enrichment for your animals. The second item we feed is mini mealworms. Um, these can actually be hand fed with tongs which is really great, we'll put in a clip of that. Um, and the other thing we do is leave them in a cup. This means that they can get them throughout the night and if any of them aren't as confident to take it from the tongs, they can take it from the bowl which is just as fine with us. And always, we always dust these with a calcium and mineral powder. Um, this means that they're getting all their essential vitamins, minerals, and the calcium combined with the UVB means they have strong and happy, healthy bones, which means they won't be at risk from metabolic bone disease, which is a problem with reptiles. Make sure you have the right lighting and the right supplements so your animals are happy and healthy. And we feed these guys a few crickets and mealworms each every other day. This means that they get a nice amount of nutrients and they can either hump their food or get some of the mealworms provided. So now we're going to move on to the actual breeding of this species. Now this is still quite unknown on the online uh, community. Uh, we are actually really lucky. We have the second generation of captive bred, whereas most of the ones that you'll find in your local pet stores will be wild caught. So we had a long chat with uh, the people who actually provided us with our wedge snout skinks about how they went about breeding. And what they kind of said is they made sure to keep the bottom layer moist and that kind of uh, created a nice environment and success for breeding. We haven't had any results in terms of breeding uh, with our current species, but we will definitely update you if we do. Uh, we are currently following the same kind of guidelines that he uh, uh, that he provided us on how to actually breed this species. But the thing with these is we don't actually know what sexes we actually have as they are a really hard species to sex. We're hoping that with the amount that we have, we have four in there right now, we're hopefully that we've at least got one female in there. So we currently have two adults, one subadult and one juvenile. But of course, once they all grow up, then it would encourage more breeding. And hopefully we will have uh, some babies coming around. Uh, now, of course, these are one of the species that do a live birth. This is not an egg laying species. So eventually one day we will see just a little one running around. So in terms of handleability for this species, it might not be great for you as you don't really get to handle them as often as other reptiles. They are going to be mostly buried in the substrate. You can take them out if you can catch them um, and they will happily sit on your hands. They'll squirm around sort of trying to bury into your hands, which they can't do as they'd rather be buried in the sand. Once you take them out, they are very friendly. They're not going to bite you. They're not going to scratch you or anything, um, but they just rather wouldn't be in your hands. They'd rather be in the soil. The best thing to do with this species is to interact with them during feeding time. So you can tong feed them mealworms and stuff like that. Um, this means you can interact with your wedge snout skinks. You can draw the mealworm across the sand, they'll feel the vibrations, and they'll chase it across the enclosure. This is very exciting to watch and it means you're interacting with your pet and not stressing it out by handling it more than you should. So we just wanted to let you guys know that this is an, of course a new species for us as well. Uh, we hope that we have provided you with the right kind of information that you're looking for. So before actually discovering these on the KBN Reptiles website, I hadn't actually personally heard of them and neither had you. No. Um, so we looked into as much information as we could. We found a few different articles online, maybe two or three, um, a few different scientific journals of them observing them in the wild, but no care guides, no sort of information about them. Um, we've had a few people ask for care guides on this. Um, so we're trying our best. We found all the information we could online and all the observations that we've made during our time having them. Um, we're keeping them pretty successfully at the yeah, moment. I mean, we we wanted to provide you guys with at least something that you can at least start off into looking in the wedge snout and skinks. Uh, now, of course, all the information that we've given you today, we don't want to you know, give by gospel saying that this is the way that you should do it. This is the way that how we're doing it and uh, hopefully this will work for you as well because it is a great species and uh, it is quite a funny species to watch as well, especially during feeding. Uh, but we just wanted to provide you guys with at least something you guys can uh, look into getting some wedge snouted skinks and have some kind of information before you get them. But do make sure when you are going to buy these, double check whether they are wild caught or captive bred. We were lucky enough to get the captive bred um, which means they won't have any sort of parasites that they may have incurred in their time in the wild. Um, this means that they're going to be healthier and probably live longer. You're going to know sort of the rough age, whereas a wild caught you might not know as much information about them. 
And if we have missed anything in this video, we would like to know uh, if you can put it down in the comments below. We do read all the comments that you guys give us, and especially with this species, we're also looking to learn. And uh, maybe you guys can teach each other stuff down in the comments as well. Yeah, if you do have this species, um, leave a comment, um, sort of your experience keeping them. And if you don't keep them, this probably is a good addition to your collection. Especially if you haven't heard of it, you can show people, um, teach people about this new species. Hopefully get more people excited about this species. And we can keep a more diverse range of reptiles in this hobby. Not just the standard stuff that we usually keep now. You can expand your horizons and keep a lot of cool different reptiles that not everyone has heard about. So yeah, we just wanted to give you just a quick warning message that, uh, you know, everything we might say might not be the best way of doing stuff. It's just how we're doing it. But thank you guys for watching anyway. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this full care guide on the wedge snouted skinks, child size sepsoides. Don't forget to check us out on all of our social medias and don't forget to subscribe down below as well. Leave a comment if you guys have uh, picked up some wedge snouted skinks as this was a new species that we discovered. Um, yeah, this like we haven't really found any care guides online. So we hope you guys have enjoyed this and actually been helpful to you. So if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next Friday. Bye guys.